Well, hello, good people. You know, it's been a while since I've covered Leonardo AI, and there's been quite a few updates since my last video. We're going to talk about ControlNet, PromptMagic V2, updates to the upscale feature, and the ability to texture 3D objects. First off, let's cover PromptMagic V2. If you go over to the left side of the interface, you're going to see Prompt Magic V2. If you hover over the question mark, it tells you what this feature does. And basically it helps to adhere to your prompt a little bit better. So I have a prompt here of a female ninja warrior. Nothing too special. I'm just going to generate four images without prompt magic to show you the difference. Currently using the Dream Shaper 3.2 model. And as you see here, we have some pretty good results here, except for this one. Ooh. <laughs> but if I were to open this one up, you see it's not bad. It could use some work, but all in all, it's workable, right? So now I'm going to toggle on prompt magic and you see that it's got a prompt magic strength. If we hover over the question mark, it says how strongly prompt magic influences the output. So the higher the number, the greater the influence. So if you look at this style and this type of look, we're going to leave it at 0.3 for now, and it should influence the image just a little bit. So here are the generated images. Let's open up one of the original ones. You see, it's got that sort of cinematic vibe, but with prompt magic, it's got some additional color, a wider dynamic range. Even I guess you could say it's a bit more lively as well. And that's only with a strength of 0.3. Now let's over exaggerate it to 0.8 and see what we get. Now here are some of the generations. It looks to me that we're straying away from the original look and now it's becoming its own. So it's kind of like applying a filter on top of the Dream Shaper model. And really it's up to you on how strong you want the prompt magic to be. But now you just have more creative options. The other thing you can do is utilize a reference image. So what I'm gonna do here is come down to the bottom. Make sure you're on image prompt. We're going to click here and import an image. So I'm going to use this image that I created. We're going to import it to use as a reference image. If we look at the image weight, image weight is basically how strong of an influence the reference image is going to have. So let's put it to about halfway, maybe to about 53. Prompt magic strength will bring it up to 0.4. Let's see how that turns out. So here's one of the first images. As you can see, the hands aren't great. But in terms of using the reference image, you see there's sort of a transfer of styles. Not the best arms and hands in the world will have to work with this, that's for sure. But you can clearly see the influence of the reference image in the environment as well. So you would have to play with these sliders to get the results you want. I like to think of it as sort of like a style transfer or combining the two. That's a great way to do that. Just a few minutes ago, these images that I rendered, the posing isn't great. If we look at this one, it's all over the place. The legs look weird. It's not working at all. Now that Leonardo AI has implemented control net, we have more control over the posing of our images. Let's turn off prompt magic for now. And the first thing you have to do is make sure you're using a model that's trained on stable diffusion 1.5. Let's change this to Dream Shaper 3.2 because I know it's trained on Stable Diffusion 1.5. As we scroll down, you're going to notice a toggle from Control Net, but you need to upload a reference image first. We're going to start off with this image as my reference image. Make sure you have image to image selected. We're going to click on here and simply click on the file to upload it. You see, it's going to be here on the left. So for this example, I have a width of 832 and a height of 640. Now we can toggle on control net and you're going to see that there's an option here to control the weight. You'll also notice that you have three options here. The first one I want to show you is edge to image. I'm going to go ahead and generate four images with the exact same prompt. Let's take a look at the results here. So for one, the posing is pretty accurate. The hands could use some work, I know. <laughs> but the way edge to image works is that it looks at the details of the subject and its surroundings. You see these patterns at the background? You're going to see the same patterns in the reference image in the window in the background. 
with this image, you see that the window outlines have now become like decorations in the background. So that's how edge to image works. Yes, it'll change the details of the character, but also the surroundings. So it basically takes the outlines and the edges and recreates them. With that in mind, let's switch this to depth to image. We'll hit generate. With depth to image, you see that not only do we have the pose, but the environment is totally different because what's happening here is that it's now looking at the foreground, the middle ground, and the background, not necessarily the edges and the outlines of the image, but it's looking at depth. This is a great way to pose your character and change the environment around it. Unlike the previous example where the window was influencing the image, you see here that the background is totally different. Same thing with this one. So now I'm going to switch this to pose to image, but you're going to notice here that it doesn't really follow the pose as much as I'd like it to. It's close and it does a great job in terms of the details, but we're not getting the left arm. Sometimes you just have to get a better reference image. So I'm going to use this one instead. Same prompt, generate four more images. Here's the generated images. This one is very close. I like the way the hands are here. A little janky, workable. We could take it into canvas and fix it. Same issues with the hand here, but as you can see, the actual fighting pose is more accurate. When you're using post image, I find images with less of a background do a lot better for these types of images. The good thing is that you have three different options here to get the desired result. Now let's talk about the upscale features. If you hover over your image, you're going to see a creative upscaler, an alternate upscaler, and now an HD upscaler. Here's the original. This is a Carnage Venom hybrid character. I quite like the original. I want you to pay attention to the details of the face, the horns here, and especially the texture. We'll switch this to the alternative upscaler. You'll notice in this area, some of the details are a bit more prominent now. So it's given it a little bit more of an edge. With the upscaled option, those details now have smoothened a little bit more. Switching it to the HD upscale method, there's details here that we didn't even see with the other options here. I find the HD upscaler is a good balance and I tend to use it more personally myself, but it really depends on what you're creating. Moving right along, let's look at texture generation. If you see here on the left, there's an area called texture generation. It is an alpha stage, so there is some improvement to be made. First, I want to show you a couple examples where I've had success. And this is supposed to be a dragon egg that I textured with sort of like this chromey granite type of material. I forget what it's actually called. And then here's a rock where I did the same thing. And here are some shoes that didn't work so well. And I think because there's different surfaces, you've got the shoelaces, you've got the soles here. I don't think this is for complex models just yet, but for simple models like this that don't have multiple layers where you have to texture, I think it works best with things like this, at least for now. Now, in case you want to try this yourself, first you need a 3D model. The first place where you can get 3D models and for free is a place called TurboSquid. Unfortunately, the site is down at the moment. They're experiencing heavy traffic. So if you don't get in, just try again later. But as you see here below, there are free 3D models, even simple ones. The other site is called CG Trader. One thing you need to be aware of with these 3D models, different platforms have different file formats. Currently, Leonardo AI only accepts file formats that are OBJ. So if you filter for this particular file format, you'll see a range of free models here that you can try out. Again, start with simple ones like, yeah, like this carpet, maybe some grass. <laughs> you do have to register, but all you have to do is click on the image and then you're going to get a free download section here. It takes a few seconds just to download it and you're good to go. Once you have a model that you can work with, head over to upload new object. Click on that. Give your model a name. I'm just going to put cookie test. 
because we are going to texture a cookie. You can click here or drag the file on top, which is what I'm gonna do. There you go, there's my cookie. Then all you have to do is click on start texturing. You'll see your model in its raw form. I'm just gonna move this down so that we have it facing us. You can use the mouse to change the perspective and all that stuff. But you'll also see that you can control it by this corner here. And basically you have your Y axis, which is up and down, X axis, which is left and right, and your Z axis, which is your depth. So front and back or foreground and background. And before we enter the prompt, I just wanna show you the settings. Mesh adjustment is just turning it and zoom will bring it closer closer or farther, but these have no influence in how it textures the model currently. The assets we'll look at after once the texturing is done. So we'll head back into generation and all I'm going to type in here is chocolate chip cookie. For now, it's best to just use simple terms. Now what we're going to do is actually just generate a preview and it's going to cost you five tokens. So once you click on that, you see here that it's processing. It usually will only take a few minutes to do that. And the preview is just going to show you typically on the face of the actual object. It's not going to texture everything just yet. Here we have the generated preview and I know at first it really doesn't look like much, but trust me, it gets better. But as I said, it's only going to do the front of the object and you see the back there, nothing on there. At this point, what you want to do is generate full texture. Just be aware it costs 30 tokens. When you hit generate full texture, you see that it's going to give you a warning. That'll be about five minutes, maybe longer, depending on the traffic on the server. You could simply click out of here and go somewhere else. Now, in my case, I already did this. So let's look at the chocolate chip cookie that it developed. As I said, from the preview, it didn't look that great, but once it was fully baked, you'll notice that if we flip on the back end here, it's got a different texture. Just keep in mind, this is still in alpha. They're gonna improve this a lot more, but as you can see with a simple object, even with a simple prompt, you can get some pretty decent results at the moment. Well, that was a lot to cover. Let me know in the comments below what you like best about what you saw and how are you finding Leonardo AI. Now if this happens to be your first time coming across Leonardo AI, make sure to check out these videos to get you up to speed. They might be slightly outdated, but it'll at least get you started. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.